Oh my gosh, you guys. This is the first time this has happened in La Vagabond history. Uh, I wasn't paying attention. I'm pretty, pretty, not very happy with myself at the moment. We very nearly just ran into a rock in the middle of the ocean. Captain is understandably not too happy. We've just been coming across the sound. We are motor sailing today because of the wind angle and we also really need to charge the batteries. We have our friends on board, Jack and Fran, and we were all just talking down in the cockpit, getting excited about us sailing on the trimaran and sailing through Indonesia because Jack's been there before. So he had some pointers to give us, but anyway, we just stopped paying attention and then Quickly I saw Riley like running up to the helm and he like threw it to starboard and I was like why 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 and I looked in front of us and there was this like a rock island that came out of nowhere well it didn't it was on Navionics but we just stopped paying attention because we were motor sailing and we thought we were safe you know we very nearly ran aground if he hadn't noticed when he did <sighs> how close would you say we were well, it's, it's not that, it's the fact that I didn't pick up on it until we crossed over a reef, which Navionics says is unnavigable. What I did was just f***ing atrocious. It was re really, really poor captaincy. So I'm less interested in the thing that was in front of us, which, you know, maybe we would have hit, but we should have run aground half a mile before that. We just went over the top of a reef that's clearly marked, don't go over this, and I was just down there having a bullshit. It's like, it's really dumb. Yeah. Riley needed a second to cool off right about here, but he's going to revisit and talk about this event later on in the episode. Yeah, I mean, I f***ed up. I think that it's a teachable point. Hello. Hey, did you wake up? It's never a nice feeling putting everyone's lives in danger, especially when we have kids and guests on board right now. It's not just Riley and I. The idea of bending a rudder up and having water flooding inside may not have been life-threatening considering where we were and the conditions, but can you imagine the drama only months before we're going to sell her? It just made us feel pretty sick, to be honest. How's the navigating around here? Oh, it's not easy. The, w the worst thing that's going to happen is I think we're going to anchor on the beach and we're not going to be protected. How are you, Sarah? Good. Enjoying my snuggles. <laughs> You'll be leaving us soon, hey? Yeah, it'll be sad. I'm going to smuggle him with me in yeah. Canada. <laughs> Sarah, who'd been crewing on board for three months now, was going to be leaving us soon. As well as Jack and Fran from the YouTube channel Back to Basics, who we had the pleasure of meeting in Australia last time we were back there. We couldn't wait to show these guys one of our favourite anchorages here in the Exuma Islands. We'd have the whole island to ourselves, plus some incredible secret diving spots we've marked on our charts from our last visit here. <laughs> He's getting in there now. So many of you guys have been asking about my fitness routine since having my second baby, but I would be lying if I said I did it every single day. I do try and do it most days, always followed by an athletic greens, which I'm going to talk more about in a minute. But yes, I do three rounds of these exercises and it's kind of a full body, works your whole body and I'm always aching the next day, which is good. If anyone would like to see Riley's fitness routine, he's very hesitant to show everyone his big muscles, but... <laughs> sort of present themselves, I would have thought. Those 10 kilo weights that I laugh at you about having, they're actually really good. He's always, he's always picking on me for how much weight I bring onto the boat with my shoes. And I have four pairs of shoes, apparently they're too heavy. But I do love your weights. I agree, they are essential. No, it's the occasional. Oh, what if we got a washing machine, Riley? <laughs> that's that's my main battle. I just want a little washing machine. I've said it so many times in the videos now. People are gonna be like, I get it, Elena, you want a washing machine. Maybe I'll just surprise you in Vietnam and one will just rock up to the factory. Maybe I'll just 
surprise you. And... It's like the captain's penchant for jettison. No, you will not. That is a part of one of my... It's actually not even my favourite book, but it's a sailing book called The Riddle of the Sands. And, he, and the captain's throwing shit overboard, and the narrator in the, in the book goes to slake the captain's penchant for jettison and it's just always stuck in me. Back to work. Okay, I'm about to make my athletic greens for the day. I think a reason why this has been the only all-in-one greens powder to actually stay on the boat and become a part of our daily routine is because Riley, you know how much of a skeptic he is, actually really likes that it's based on what the latest science indicates is essential for human health. So it's Riley approved. Uh, 75 vitamins and minerals from whole food sourced ingredients. Uh, it's got adaptogens, prebiotics, probiotics, antibiotics. <laughs> it doesn't have antibiotics. Antioxidants. It supports your gut health, immunity, our energy levels. You guys often see us looking for fresh food and uh, we are constantly low on all the nice green things. So it's really nice to have this as like a guarantee that we're getting all the goodness in each day. And it's two scoops for every eight ounces of water. And that's it, my friends. If you guys would like to give Athletic Greens a try, we would love that. Today with your first purchase, they're gonna give you five travel packs are free. You can put them in your pocket or a backpack if you like. And also a year supply of their vitamin D3 and K2. So I'll put the link in the description below and also here. And we really appreciate the support from you guys and also Athletic Greens. Thank you so much. On with the show. <laughs> I shouldn't do that, that is so lame. Here comes an elephant, everybody. That's actually what the Wiggles do. I am mortified right now. For you, sir. You ready to go for a swim? Yeah. Oh, that's itchy. Oh, that's itchy. What did you do? You, I can have a towel. you can have a towel, yeah. I put seaweed on my head trying to be funny for Lenny, and then now I'm really itchy. <laughs> and it's not sea life, but it's, there was something on it, like in it. Fran, you're the marine biologist. Why am I itchy? We need a marine biologist. So I'm rubbing shampoo on me. I don't know why, if this is going to help, but. <laughs> There are numerous species of seaweed in the Bahamas, Sargassum being one of them. This brown seaweed floats in the ocean, making it a perfect home for tiny sea creatures like jellyfish, crustaceans, as well as algae. A toxic one in particular that can really make your skin itch. It turns out that using soap and fresh water to clean the area was the best way to help relieve the irritation. Although it was a mild case, I'm glad it was me and not Lenny. Lenny, do you need a towel, mate? So I actually said as as we were sailing along and I, I went over this reef, I made so I made a, a really bad mistake and I said to everyone on board, like I'm so sorry, um, that was really silly, uh, and I've never done that before. I sort of pride myself on just constantly paying attention, like paying attention to all of the things that I can not just for one month or two months, but for 10 years and then 20 years, because Elena and I and the kids are gonna be on the water for a long, long time. So that's that's sort of the thing that I've always prided myself on. And I really, yeah, I've, I mean, I f***ed up. Uh, but uh, the reason that I wanted to highlight that was, I think that it's a teachable point. I think that like a lot of people can learn from that. It's not the sort of environment where you can say, oh, you know, I've done a very good job for the last seven years. I've earned a bit of a break. You can't do that. Like, you just have to constantly remain unbelievably vigilant for the entire time that you're on a boat. And if you're not doing that, then you, you need a rest. We've had several rests recently. I'm not fatigued or anything. It feels like a small thing, but it's really not. And it would be easy, like, Sarah goes, oh, you know, it, it's okay. And Jack and Fran go, oh, you know, it's fine. And it would be easy for me to, to just go, yeah, you know, yeah, that's, but I don't think, I actually don't think that it is. I think that that was really shit. 
Um, if someone else had, like if I'd have left someone else in charge of the boat and they had done that, I would have been like, what the hell are you doing? So yeah, we, that was a, a massive mistake and things are really, really serious on a boat. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I've, I've forgiven myself, but I really wanna drag myself over the coals here <laughs> very publicly so that you guys can learn and so that I remember that this is really important shit um, and not to, not to take anything for granted and to continue to do the right thing. If there are people out there, male or female, who are responsible at one time or most of the time or at any particular time, uh, I think some congratulations are in order. It's a really tough job to continue to try to not make any mistakes. So yeah, good, good luck, well done out there, everyone that's still sailing around and uh, hasn't crashed. And I'll try to not drive over reefs anymore sleeping at the wheel. shows us where the vagabond is. Look, there's the vagabond. <laughs> and we're going, that's where we were, and we're going over here. Oh, there we go, Pigeon Key. <laughs> Do you want to go to Pigeon Key? Yeah. So we're on high alert this morning as we're moving anchorages. You give it a rest, mate. It was both your and my fault, Rally. No. I don't know. You probably thought I was keeping a lookout. I thought you were. No, that doesn't make any sense. It was 100% my fault. Okay. Well, I'm just trying to take some of the blame <laughs> from you. It Fully was all of his in front fault. of our. <laughs> 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 Look how blue this water is behind me. Stunning. So there's a shallow sandbar there and a shallow sandbar there coming off this beach. So we're gonna go through the middle and anchor around here. Pigeon key, you guys. This is pretty perfect. We got so lucky with the weather today. Stunning beach. Everyone else has gone spear fishing. Fran's really keen to try and spear a fish just using the pole spear, not even a wetsuit or fins. So she's off on a mission today and we wanted to come to the beach to be with the kiddos. How's your morning been, Sarah? Good. How can, how can it not be good? <laughs> it's so beautiful here. Yeah. I think this is like the most beautiful beach we've been to in yeah. the water. I agree. So, so nice. <laughs> Fish yet, so 
We're on a mission. Back in Australia, Riley told me the name. What was it? Poggy. Oh, a pogi. A, po a pogi. Poggy. <laughs> That's the kind of boat too. The boys are still spearfishing, and we are paddling around, following them around. Kind of cold at the moment, and very hungry. It's been a big day. We haven't eaten, yeah. but it's so quiet here on the water. I was just saying to Fran that I feel like I need to whisper. You can hear every noise, like a boat off in the distance. Yeah. There's hardly a breath of wind right now. It's stunning. Friends, look so good. Thank you. Are you a bit stuck, darling? Are you a bit stuck? <laughs> Come on, baby, darling. Yay, you made it out. You made it out. <laughs> Having already indulged in some beer battered fish as an entree, Jack and Fran headed to the beach to cook up the crawfish. How did it go, guys? Oh, good, eh? Hey. It's just what an incredible afternoon, hey? That sunset yeah. was. Magic. <laughs> yeah. We saw a couple of um, iguanas. Like really? The ones with the rat throat. Oh. Yeah, we've never seen them before in Big Australia, one. so I don't know whether they're super rare. But anyway, we were very Rock pressed. iguanas. So they have North Bahamian rock iguanas here in the Exumas, but yeah. I didn't know they were on this island. Yeah, you yeah. may have heard a scream. Fran got scared. And <laughs> they started like staunching down the beach. They're so fast. Yeah, they, they are. are they're really oh, fast. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. petrified of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's night time now, Lenny. making pancakes this morning because it's her second last morning and they're delicious. Thanks Sarah. <laughs> and we've just spotted a big squall on the horizon. There's a wall of water headed our way so we're kind of running around just pulled all the washing off the lines. Um, it's all still a bit damp so we'll just hang it out later but check this out. What's happening Lenny? No, it's Water on the vagabond. There's water on the vagabond. Yeah, there's so much water on the vagabond. Yeah. We're all just waiting for this squall to pass any day now. <laughs> it's quite a big one. And then we're going to navigate our way to Georgetown, which is the main island in the Exumas. It's still super beautiful. Um, we'll be able to provision the boat. And there's lots of kids there for Lenny, which would be great. The anchorage is stunning apparently. We haven't been there, but it's like an island just off Georgetown. We really want good visibility because there's lots of reef around here. As you know, there's just reef everywhere and we're about to see a thing right now. That's stunning, hey? I, yeah, I was saying that before, it's gorgeous. I've really come to trying to think of a way to say this without sounding like a cheesy I've really come to appreciate mother yeah mother nature I have what she can produce it's not too there is mate have a look ready one two see that one 
See that one over there? Huh? Yeah. One, two, yeah! <laughs> Thanks, mate! <laughs> I just took all credit for that. <laughs> what Glad did they, they say? Glad they like their work. <laughs> what did they say? I said, hey, LeVague Vaughn, look what you're doing. Keep you, doing what you're doing. You're the man. Yeah. I was like, no worries. <laughs> Thanks for becoming a part of our family. <laughs> Alright, so our friends are leaving us. See you later. Thanks, thanks for everything. Thanks for coming all this way to see us. Right, thanks for having us in your beautiful home. No worries. Anytime. We'll come and um, yeah. We'll host you on the Salty Dingo next time you're in Australia. <laughs> One, two. <laughs> that was epic. That was a beautiful backflip, wasn't it? It was. It's a very rare occasion where both of our boys are sleeping. They're very secured, don't worry. But Riley and I are having a swim together. So it's just us again on board. We say goodbye to Jack and Fran today. Those guys are such legends, hey? Absolute superstars. Do go and check out their channel. You won't regret it. Mm. They're and um just really good people. You know, yeah. the, the sort of people that I just hope succeed in, you know, whatever it is that they're doing. Boat yeah. life or YouTube or just anything. All of it. <laughs> and we also say goodbye to Sarah today. Sarah's yeah, left she was, us. Yeah, she's been with us for ages. So this is Sarah, everyone. I just had to officially be part of the crew. Where's your room? Right here. Show us everything. <laughs> like enough people have walked through there. That was quite the experience. Yeah, her time had come to an end and thank you Sarah for looking after us and for loving the boys. I know you really loved them. It was so, it's so amazing to see that. That's true. So it's just us for now, but we have some new crew coming soon who we're really excited to meet. We've got Kai who's from Sweden and Imogen who's from England. So that's great. Yeah. Complete crew swap out. I've met Kai before in the Azor, so I know he's a legend. Yeah. I'm looking forward to meeting um, Imi. Yeah. Imi, the quintessential English nanny. Apparently, yeah. I've spoken to her on the phone. She has the most thick accent. Like, she oh must my gosh, get annoyed darling, I can't wait to come and meet you people all. People calling her Mary Poppins, <laughs> but that's all I can think about. Yeah, we're getting Mary Poppins vibe, vibes from her. You wanna go swim? Yep.